Welcome back to the Mission Control Center. Uh, John Steinmeier, John is the Senior uh, Project Manager for the Launch Systems Group uh, at Orbital Sciences. And um, for those that uh, tuned in back in April, John was uh, very uh, nice to come and join me for the, uh, the launch activities for that test flight. Uh, and uh, so welcome back, John, it's good to have you. Thanks, Kyle, it's great to be back. And as you said, we're all uh, eagerly anticipating our launch tomorrow, our COTS demo launch, which will, as you saw in the video clip, utilize our new Antares launch vehicle and also demonstrate our newly developed Cygnus cargo transfer vehicle. Let's talk about uh, Antares for a second, obviously, because that's the that's the booster that gets it there. Um, the the test flight back in April it had the uh, the mass simulator uh, to demonstrate the Cygnus, but um, that was obviously part of it. But proving Antares on a first flight that was a big deal. Yes, it was. That was a a very important milestone for us. The first milestone in the uh, the COTS commercial orbital transportation system. Uh, contract. Um, and the launch, uh, when we were here doing the play-by-play, -play, looked very good. And on uh, further review, um, it was as good <laughs> as it looked. Um, we were able to verify all the major objectives for that test launch, uh, verify all the requirements that uh, were, an, were elements of that uh, test launch. We've made um, only very slight corrections uh, to uh, some systems for the following launch. So uh, it was a great launch for an inaugural launch, and we're certainly looking forward to uh, duplicating that tomorrow. And so the Antares, um, obviously, uh, you know, you have to go pour over all that data for quite some time. I mean, it's you know how it performed because it delivered the mass simulator right where you wanted it. Uh, but you still had to go over pretty long period of time where you had to had to review all of that just to make sure that everything worked the way it needed to. Yeah, it's been a busy five months uh, going over the post-flight data in, uh, in thorough detail. Um, um, a series of uh, post-flight reviews, um, including outside experts who reviewed that data with us and verified that, yes, indeed, we verified uh, all the objectives Right. Uh, in addition, uh, during these past five months, we've had two other very important launches for NASA. Uh, we were able to uh, launch the IRIS mission on our Pegasus launch vehicle in, in June, and then just uh, a week ago Friday, we launched the, the LADI mission for uh, NASA on our Minotaur 5 launch vehicle. And so now it uh, sets the stage for... Um um, the, this next flight, of course, and we've been showing a little bit this morning the, the view from the launch pads. Beautiful day there, at least uh, today. So hopefully we'll get that, the same view that we're looking at right there. We'll get that uh, hopefully tomorrow. Um, uh, the latest report I heard was uh, about 75% of favorable weather, maybe some clouds uh, um, you know, that may be in the area. But of course, uh, the weather forecast uh, is something that they'll start looking at a lot more closely once that countdown begins, which is roughly about eight hours uh, or so before uh, launch. Um, talk about Cygnus now. I mean, that's that's the whole um, reason for the Antares is to deliver that. And and uh, it's been a long time coming, five or six years in the in the making for this. You're right. It's been about five years in development, uh, both for the launch vehicle and the, the Cygnus system. Um, as you can well imagine, it's a very complex system. As you saw in the video clip, it consists of two primary elements, a pressurized cargo element that contains or is able to contain about 19 cubic meters of cargo, and then a service module which uh, propels the Cygnus vehicle, maneuvers the Cygnus vehicle, and it's largely developed from our own in-house uh, spacecraft propulsion components. Yeah, so there's, you know, it's like historical components that are proven um, that you guys have been yeah, working correct. on and, and evolving into what we're going to see with, with Cygnus and this delivery to the station. And Cygnus is going to rendezvous flying, will perform a number of steps on the way to the station to... Uh, uh, to prove it as a, a rendezvous vehicle as well. Yeah, that's correct. As you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, it's about a four-day 
uh, mission before we are able to berth with the space station. During that time, we'll execute a number of burns to uh, essentially catch up to the space station, maneuver within range of the space station. Uh, we need to verify some systems on board the Cygnus as part of the COTS uh, milestone objectives and uh, verify that the vehicle is safe and uh, fully operational and uh, ready to uh, do its job to deliver cargo to the space station. Even Wait. though this is a demonstration mission, we've already uh, loaded about 1,300 pounds of cargo into Cygnus and uh, are planning to deliver that uh, on Sunday. And we were just looking at the rendezvous profile, but uh, uh, it's a, a fairly standard um, profile for uh, the automatic phase. And then, of course, the crew will uh, uh, take over for the actual uh, grapple and berthing to the Harmony module, Node 2's uh, Nader Earth-facing port. So you can see the, the approach. And uh, over the course of time, it's about a five-day from uh, four-day from launch to, to uh, berthing uh, profile. Um, and then a Cygnus, of course, will stay for about a month or so uh, at the station before it heads home. And obviously it will uh, take trash, unneeded items away from the station that, uh, and then it'll burn up in the atmosphere. Yeah, that's the idea. Um, as you mentioned, it'll be berthed for about a month and allow the crew to transfer whatever unneeded elements uh, that they have. And uh, once uh, the Cygnus is complete or has done its job, it will... Uh, will uh, return to, to through the atmosphere and uh, and dispose of the trash uh, effectively. <laughs> Just like the, the Progress vehicle, the HTV, the exactly. ATV, uh, all of those have the same type of uh, profile in terms of returning, um, but uh, their, their main mission obviously is to sustain the station uh, uh, as a laboratory and a home, uh, away from home for, for these crew members. Uh, um, uh, again, uh, we're talking with John Steinmeier, who's a senior project manager for Orbital Sciences Launch Systems Group, uh, and uh, we appreciate you dropping by. John will be here with us throughout the coverage uh, Wednesday, uh, beginning at 9.15 uh, Central Time, 10.15 Eastern, and on console here in the room overseeing this team will be Courtney McMillan. She'll be the flight director. She's followed this along with a, uh, a whole host of uh, uh, folks from Orbital, NASA, and uh, uh, even the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency. So uh, it's, a, it's a great team that's uh, greatly anticipating uh, uh, this, the launch and arrival of Cygnus. Yeah, we're expecting a big day tomorrow. Thanks again, John. Thank you.